Hello and welcome back to Biker Stuff. Today's video is an addition to my coil upgrade video from a few weeks ago. In every generation there is a chosen one. She alone will stand among the oily rags, the replacement parts and the used tyres. She is Biker Stuff. I have been asked to explain how the wiring works when changing from the old Honda two coil system to the four individual coil sticks or coil pack layout that has been used by Honda since the early 2000s. I've read that some people are concerned about the difference in resistance between the sticks and the original coils. On the CBR1000F that I did this change on, yes, my little piglets, the original static resistance was 3.2 ohms for two plugs, whereas these sticks I've replaced them with are 1.8 ohms each, so 3.6 ohms per pair. I think I speak for everyone here when I say, huh? Now, how much difference the extra 0.4 ohms resistance will make on the systems, I don't know. Maybe if someone qualified can email me with an explanation and tell me if it is a concern. However, as you will have seen in the video for part four of the project, the bike starts and runs. If you would like to do this type of conversion, I'll show you the wine diagram and how I did it, the parts I used and how I connected it to the bike. That is the wiring diagram. I'll not go into it too much as everything you need to know is there. I will, however, explain all the hardware changes I made. If your Honda has two coils with the black, white and a blue, yellow wire going to one and a black, white and a yellow, blue going to the other, this is the wiring diagram for you. I obviously hold no responsibility for any mistakes you make on your bike. I can only show you the door you have to walk through it. These are Honda CBR1000RR coil sticks that I picked up from eBay. They range in price from £5 to £80 each. You'll need four, just make sure they are the same type. Honda changed them at certain points in production. So, see if you can get them from all the same year or even better from the same bike. You will also need the loom that connects the coils to the bike. You will only need the connectors from in it and a few centimetres of wire from each. I used one millimetre cable which is good for eight amps and six different colours. If you want to keep your colours similar to the bike, get a black, a white, a blue and a yellow. The other two colours are up to you. You'll also need a soldering iron, solder, some heat shrink, black insulation tape, plus some cables, zip ties. When you make your loom, cut the end of the wires longer than you think you need. Then, once you've assembled it on the bike, you will know how long they all need to be. That's the basics of the new loom sorted. Now you have two choices when it comes to connecting this loom to the bike. On Piglet, I cut the connectors off the wires going to the coils, then crimped them all into a four-way plug like this one. The other way, if you don't have access to those type of plugs and the correct crimper for it, is to use four male quarter inch plugs like these. Crimp them into your new loom and push fit them 
straight into the wires that go to the coils. But be careful as these quarter inch spades become disconnected or corrode as they are exposed to the elements. Whereas these four way waterproof connectors can't. That's the wiring complete. One other job is to cut the shields off the original plug leads. I cut a piece of tube, sharpened it in the grinder and used it to punch the old cable out, squeezing it in the vise. Then just slide it over the new coils. Finally, make sure everything is safe and can't wear through to expose a wire to the metal. This is where a cable tie comes in handy. Now you can reassemble the bike enough to run it safely to test. Then once you're happy, rebuild the bike and go for a ride. I'll leave the wiring diagram in the description for you to download. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you for watching. You know you liked it, so tell your friends and share me around. See you next time on Biker Stuff.